G'day and welcome back to another episode on the podcast, YouTube channel. However it is you're listening or watching, welcome back. I've got another one for you here. This one is about becoming an intentional photographer. Now, this is something that I struggled with when I first went from, you know, 20 years of technical photography to having a bit of an interest in photography and, and uh, as an art form, thinking about composition and, and, and all that sort of thing. And one of the things that I struggled with was storytelling. And once I kind of realized that being more intentional and having a bit more of an outcome-driven approach to your photography, the storytelling and everything else, composition, everything else kind of naturally follows this really is the first step, becoming more intentional. Now, you've no doubt, and you may have even done it yourself, been on holidays, and it's hard, it's hard to get out of this <laughs> this kind of habit. Is you're just recording everything that's going on in front of you because you want to remember it. You're creating memories. And uh, so, and you see that at the tourist locations, people are just spraying photos. And what's the saying? Um, spray and pray, <laughs> hoping for a good photo out of all those photos. But... What I want to talk about, and I've written an article on the on the website, and I'll bring this up for the for for those of you on YouTube here, is uh, I'm going to break it down and understand what it is, what intentional being intentional photographer really is all about. Basically, in a nutshell, if you don't want to watch the whole video, or listen to the whole podcast. In a nutshell, it is really about understanding the motivation for pulling out your phone out of your pocket, purse, handbag, whatever it is, out of your car. Uh, and and pausing to reflect on just that moment before you take the photo and go, why, why am I doing this? Why have I, what's motivated me? And once you start thinking like that, then you start thinking backwards and reverse engineering from the outcome. You go, okay, my intention is to capture the weather here at this landscape. The, the clouds look amazing. Uh, that's the story. I want to I want to capture this moment in time, this, this weather here at this location. So you're not just recording the scene because our cameras are automatic. They do an amazing job. But as a storyteller and as an intentional f- photographer, you have an outcome. You have something that you're trying to communicate, you capture, and that's the memory. It could be just be simply a memory for yourself in years to come. So that's what we're going to talk about. So uh, so on the website, it's smartphonephotographytraining.com forward slash capturing dash photos <laughs> slash intentional. That's a long URL, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it's in the notes. You'll find it in the notes down there. Or if you're part of the uh, free membership group, then and that's just basically the website forward slash join, you'll be able to get access to all my my full articles. I think we're up over, I think I'm up over 60 articles in there now, which is which is brilliant. So I have this set up into sections. So I've got what is a photo, uh, photographic intention, intention versus goals, because there is a slight distinction between the two. Uh, what is photographic intention? I guess we better cover what it is. I think we've pretty much done that. The difference between intention and storytelling. So that one's an interesting one. Next, I'm going to cover just some tips, just like a, a checklist, if you like, accessory selection, manual um, setup on your... Because sometimes you might go, okay, uh, I'm taking photos of bees flying around. So because your intention is to try and capture sharp details of that bee, then... Because you know what the intention is, then you might go and choose the right kind of camera settings. So what is intention? Intention is both the motivation and reason for taking the photo and the desired result. So becoming more intentional it really is, and like I touched on, it's really one of the biggest steps to becoming more transformational in your in your efforts and your, and your outcomes because you kind of, everything else follows from that. It's really a building block. What is that? A foundational skill, if you like. Next is intention versus goals because we don't really have a goal for a photo. We have an intention and an outcome, but our goal is much more overarching than that. It's much more um, long-term, mid-term, long-term, whatever you, whatever you want to look at it. But your goal in photography might be to win a uh, photo competition at your local camera club. Your goal might be to get more likes on Instagram. It might be that you want to print your photos uh, I'm going through that stage at the moment now where I'm going through my photos and trying to identify some from our, our um, when we were living over in London, you kind of want to put some of that up on the wall, so I'm going through some of my photos there. So that could be your goal when you're taking the photos. So understanding your goal helps you kind of link that intention. So your goal might be to become better at macro photography. So the intention of that specific photo that you're taking might be a particular technique that you're trialing. So you might be trying to get down low and take photos of mushrooms 
And if you don't quite get underneath the, I don't know what you call it, the, the head of the mushroom, I guess you might call it. If you, you might be, you, the intention of the photo might be, I'm going to try and get underneath it so that I can see the, the texture and the form underneath that mushroom head. And so your overall goal is to get better at macro photography, but your intention is, is shot specific, if that makes sense. So you're practicing a particular technique. You might be trying to incorporate landscape compositional guidelines and rules into that macro photography in that scenario so you, you you might be lighting you might have a you might have picked up a ulanzi little light a little cube light or a Lytro or whatever your tools you have even a hardware light you can get them at a hardware shop you can get these lights that are amazing and the intention is how to just look at how sight lighting backlighting all that sort of thing works and uh, so that's the outcome for that particular photo so that's how it differs from, from goals. All right. So what is intention? I think we've done this. It's both the motivation and the reason for taking the photo and the, and the desired result. The difference between storytelling and photo intention, intent is the subject choice, the preparation, the plan, the desired outcome, the kind of the overall vision and objective for the photo. Storytelling is how you engage with the viewer, how you use composition, lighting, uh, details, colors, tones, lines, shapes, forms, all those different um, elements in the photo. The combination of all those and the hierarchy of when someone views your photo, what has more emphasis and then how we guide them through the photo, all that sort of thing, that all contributes to the storytelling. So the intention might be, hey, I want to communicate how amazing this part of the scene looks. So the storytelling then is built into that using composition light color tones all that sort of thing to kind of and editing after that to, to enhance that viewer experience so the next section here is pause to consider the intention now i think i've explained this enough but i'll try it different ways is what is what really what is the stimulus that you're reacting to is another way of looking at it is it the tones colors shapes form lighting that caught your attention so it doesn't have to be a story that you're trying to communicate it just could be something that's really interesting and then once you understand that intention, that is stimulus, that motivation, then you can go around it and experiment with your, your different uh, creative angles, perspectives, and introduce all those other things like uh, avoiding cluttered backgrounds, looking at how the light is falling on and, and falling off the subject or the elements in the photo. And like we touched on before, these, these inform decisions when you're taking the photo. So accessory selection. Knowing what type of photo you want to capture helps you to be more prepared. If you've got a smartphone that has uh, multiple lenses on it, then you might decide, okay, this is a, a person I'm taking a photo of. I know if I use the, the native main camera, it's a wide angle, and at the distance that I'm shooting at, uh, the, their nose might look bigger, their ears might get smaller and wrap around the back of their head, that sort of thing. So you know, hey, my intention here is to make this person look nice and flattering, then you'll choose the two times telephoto option, stand back a couple of meters and, and take a, a photo like that. And that will actually bring the background look a little bit closer as well. Like they call that, uh, what is it? Compressing the photo or flattening the background. So knowing that the intention is to take the photo of this person, make them look nice, uh, bring in the context of the background, that informs that lens selection. And obviously macro, then you'll go for a macro lens. The next section of my article goes into anticipated moment. Now, this is a thing with mostly applies to street photography and uh, what do they call that? The uh, the decisive moment. So you're trying to capture that decisive moment. So knowing that, okay, I've got this beautiful uh, setup here. I've got, it's middle of the day. I've got this harsh shadows projected over this area, has really strong contrast and I'm just waiting for someone to walk in here or I'm waiting for someone to ride their bike through here and, and create a long shadow and, and real interest element to the photo. So that's the intention, how that bring, comes into that, anticipating the moment, anticipating what might happen. We cut, touched on how uh, you change manual settings, like the bee flying around the photo and I, in the YouTube. If you're looking, there's a photo of a bee here. And this was basically, I had this set up on, uh, what did I have it on? Uh, shutter Priority. So basically, I was using Lightroom mobile app, and I had the shutter was set up manually, and then the ISO was set up on auto. So uh, depending on whether I was pointing into a dark part of the 
the scene, like a, a shadow part of the, the bush that the bee was flying around, it would have automatically adjusted the ISO to make the, the exposure nice. And then if I turned around and pointed towards the sun, then it would have changed the ISO. But the shutter speed stayed the same because my intention was to try and get a sharp photo without movement blur. I didn't want the camera uh, taking over and, and reducing that shutter speed to make it look nice and then capture a blurry bee. That's kind of useless, isn't it? <laughs> Lastly, just about every photo benefits like this, I always say this is photo editing. So knowing when you go to edit the photo, knowing what the intention is, oh, it makes your job so much easier because then you'll know this is what I was trying to communicate. This is what caught my eye when I saw this scene. And I want the viewer, I want their eye and their attention to focus on that instantly as well. And then they can go wandering the way I want to manipulate their attention using leading lines and, and uh, using dodge and burn tool, all that sort of fun, creative stuff. All right, so that was, that was quite a lot. Okay, in summary here, I've got on the article, knowing the intention will ensure that you look at the photo opportunity, you'll know exactly what to do. As you practice smartphone photography, your decisions that align with that intention will become subconscious. Practicing photo intention gives you more confidence and more enjoyment on your creative journey. I couldn't have written that better myself. Actually, I did write that. <laughs> I think I think that sums it up though, doesn't it? When you, when you understand why you're motivated to take that photo, it informs so much that you can start experimenting with, with different angles, bring in other compositional techniques, look at the lighting, how that's affecting it, then right through to um, accessory choice, whether you want to go manual or not with your camera settings, and then editing to just further enhance that experience. So that's it. That's that's that article, How to Become More Intentional Photographer. I hope you enjoyed that, and, uh, and I'll catch you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>